Hi everyone, my name is Lolita and I'm one of the Cyber Sparring Fellows. I'm going to be showing you how to create your own Jeopardy game in Scratch. You'll be learning how to design your own backdrop and you'll be able to choose your own questions and answers. Alright, let's get started. First, I want to show you what the Jeopardy game project looks like. Click on the green flag, click to begin, and then you'll see a scoreboard with a lot of scores on them. You can click on any of the numbers and you'll be led to a question. You read the question and then type in whatever answer that you think is correct. Then you'll see if it was correct or incorrect. You can do this for all of the scores on the board. I will show you how to edit this in Scratch so that you could have your own questions and answers and your own design. I'm going to click on the backdrops on the side here under stage to see all of the code for the backdrops. Backdrops are the background images in our Scratch project. We needed to make two new variables in our project named score and turn. A variable in Scratch is a value that can be changed. We did this by going into variables, selecting make a variable, typing in score, and then pressing OK, and then typing in turn and then pressing OK. Doing this created the two new variables here on the side. Can you answer why we created the new code variable score and turn? Good job! Score is used to keep track of your correct answers and turn counts how many turns are left in the game. The code here is the scratch code for your back Jeopardy backdrop. The code only here on the left uses the variables turn and score that we created. This specific code block resets the value of all variables to zero, hides all the variables turn and score from your screen, and switches to backdrop one when the green flag is clicked. We will be using three backdrops in total. You can see the backdrops by clicking on the tab at the top named backdrops. The first backdrop is the image that you'll see when you first play the Scratch project. The second image, backdrop 2, will appear when the users click on the stage. And the last backdrop, backdrop 3, will appear when the game finishes. So we can go back to the code tab and we can look at the code on the right. The code blocks here will be switching between the backdrops and also keeping track of the value of turn throughout the game, which is the current number of turns. When the player finishes the game, when they have no more turns left, it will broadcast the final message, which will represent your score, and switch to backdrop 3. Now that you know how the backdrop code works, I can show you how to design the backdrops. Go back to the Backdrops tab at the top, select the first backdrop to design that one, make sure the Select tool is selected, and then click on the backdrop. It should have gotten highlighted. Then click on Fill and move the color to whatever color you would like. Then if you want to change the color of the Jeopardy text, you can also click on Jeopardy, make sure the box is around Jeopardy, select fill, and then change the color again. You can also change what the text says by adding or removing anything. Then go to backdrop 2 to change your scoreboard. Make sure the select tool is selected, click on the backdrop, click on fill, and then change the color to whatever you like. Again, you can change the color of the text too by selecting the text and then selecting fill and then moving to the color that you'd like. You can change what the text says or add anything. Then go to backdrop 3, make sure the select tool is selected, click on the backdrop again, click on fill, and then change the color. Awesome job! You just figured out how to design your own backdrops. The score panels are the scores that will be shown on the scoreboard, as you can see right here. The score panel sprites are the boxes with the numbers on them that you can see down below. You can click on any one of them, then go to the costumes to edit the color and design. 
you can do these for each of the numbered boxes. So now that we went back to the code tab, we can look at our code. These blocks allow the panels to be hidden before we start the game. When it receives the begin message, the panels you created will go to their locations. So 100 will go to this spot over here. This panel here, sprite 3, will go underneath it. And this panel right here, 300, will go underneath 200. Once the panel is clicked, it will hide or go away and broadcast its own message. To make each message different for each panel, you will name each message based on the position on the table. For example, the first panel, 100, is placed on row 1, column 1, which means we're going to make the message row 1, column 1. Now we will be designing the question panels. These are the panels next to the score panels. Click on one of the question panels, I selected Sprite 2, and then go to the Costumes tab to design it. This is an example of a multiple choice answers question panel. You can change the color of the background, and change the color of the text, and you can also freely choose your own questions and answers. The multiple choices are also optional. Click on the text and type to edit the questions and answers. I'm going to leave mine the same. You can see that there are two more costumes. Costume 2 says correct and costume 3 says incorrect. If someone gets the question right, costume 2 will show. If someone gets the costume wrong, costume 3 will show. You can also change the design for these costumes as well. Now we can go back to the code tab. These code blocks here Hide the panels when the green flag, right here, is clicked. When the game is finished, the two messages, final and done, are broadcasted, telling the program that we finished the game. If we scroll down, we can see that this is the main script of the panel. This code makes it so that whenever a score panel, for example 100, is clicked, that your question will show up on the screen. It looks like this. If I click on 100, my question shows up. Then the code makes it so that it'll be waiting for whatever answer you type in. If the player answers correctly, it'll add the score. This spot right here where it says California is where you would write the correct answer to your question. Change this box with the, your correct answer. Since my correct answer is still California, I'm going to leave it as California. So, if I type in California here, it'll tell me that my answer was correct. Now here, if my, the player answers incorrectly, it'll add zero points. The code will count how many times you've answered a question and increases a turn by one and will broadcast a done message after answering the question. The player can then move on to the next question. The number of question panels that the user created will be equal to the number of score panels. So if you have a score panel called 100, you will have one question panel to go with it. After you're done, you can see how your entire project looks like by clicking on the green flag on the top. Make sure that you edit all the panels in the project. You can edit all of the question panels by clicking on the question panel, going into the costumes, changing the text for the question and answers and the design as you would like, going back to code, 
and writing in the correct answer in the if answer equals blank then block. Don't forget to change the design for all of the panels. And then when you're done, you can see how your entire project looks by clicking on the green flag here at the top. This is how it works with our design and questions. You click on one of the scores, you see the question, you type in the answer, and you'll see if it was correct or incorrect. If I want to type in the wrong answer, I'll see incorrect. And it will work for all of the scores. You just learned how to make a Jeopardy game in Scratch. And now that you added your own backdrop colors and changed the questions and answers, you just made your own version of the Jeopardy game. Awesome job. Bye everyone.